Hello, my name is Sharon Henley. I'm the program director for the Ornish Lifestyle Medicine Program here at Centera Princess Anne Hospital. I am part of an amazing team that includes a nurse case manager, a stress management specialist, an exercise physiologist, a group support facilitator, and an operations coordinator. And all of them together work to make the Ornish Lifestyle Medicine Program a seamless venture to help you get your health and your lifestyle on track. So today we're gonna to present a condensed version of our quarterly Taste of Ornish presentation. That's usually spearheaded by our operational medical director, Dr. Gunadhar Panagrahi, and our director of cardiology, Chris Manitz. So first I'd like to give you a little background on Dr. Ornish. He's a cardiologist who went through med school in the 70s and was just really an outside the box thinker. And in the course of his studies, he realized that when we take patients to the cath lab and put in a stent and put them on another medication, that we're treating a symptom, but we're really not attacking the problem. So over the course of the last 40 years, he's done extensive research on lifestyle and its relationship to the disease process. His research is documented in numerous medical journals and publications. A large part of Dr. Ornish's research revolves around a plant-based diet, so let's talk about where that idea comes from. There are people groups on the planet that actually have no heart disease, and we've listed a few of them there. I'm not going to go into each one of them for time's sake, but it's a pretty phenomenal idea when you consider that the American Heart Association estimates that by the year 2030, over 40% of the population will have some type of coronary artery disease. These people groups subsist on a whole foods, plant-based diet, some out of necessity, some out of choice. In countries who consume a diet of whole natural foods, heart disease and cancer present at a much lower rate. So this slide is taken from the World Health Organization. And as you can see, as the practice of whole foods increases, the incidence of cancer and heart disease decreases. So there's a definite correlation there. And if you look at that green line, that's a percentage of calories from unrefined plant foods and the red line is deaths from heart disease and cancer. So there's clearly a direct correlation between those people groups who eat unrefined plant foods and the incidence of death and heart disease, which obviously goes down as the plant-based diet goes up. This slide comes from a study in Norway that starts in 1927 and goes through World War II. And you can see during the Second World War that there was a marked decrease in the death rate from circulatory disease. So what happened there? What happened was the Germans confiscated all the livestock and the farm animals to feed their military troops. So the Norwegians were forced to eat what they could grow on their, on their land. That means that their diet became a plant-based whole foods diet by necessity. Until that time, heart disease and stroke had been steadily climbing. The drastic drop happened with the diet change. But look what happens at the end of the war. Livestock is again available, meats added back to the diet, the disease process begins again. This is a slide from the year 2000 listing the top 10 leading causes of death in the U.S. Heart disease is number one. So I pulled this same data from 2017 and it's exactly the same except that stroke and accidents have changed places. So heart disease is still the number one cause of death in the United States. And so that means in 17 years we have really not made any progress. This slide is a little bit concerning because this is an illustration of what we see now in adolescents and young adults. We're finding fatty streaks and lesions showing up even in young adults. The youngest patient that we've had in our cardiac rehab was a gentleman in his 20s. So that should raise a myriad of red flags. Teenagers should not be showing up with heart disease, but they are. So why is that? If you think back maybe 50 or 60 years ago, life was very different. You probably sat down at the dinner table and had a balanced diet that was prepared at home, which meant it was not a lot of processed, refined foods. As we migrated toward fast food and larger portions, the American diet truly became sad. Teenagers are typically the first connoisseurs of fast food. So it's a $3 dinner on the way to the football game and they think they ate. But now we have an entire population who spends little time in the kitchen. They no longer sit around the table and connect. Gone are the days when you shared your day over dinner. So that connection is gone. We don't take time to eat. There's no mindful eating. We just shovel it in and we do it because we drove through and we eat on the way to the next big thing, whatever's going on in our life. As a result, our consumption of processed foods has skyrocketed at a steep cost to our health. So we don't have to really look any further to figure out why we're overweight, we can't lose weight, we have diabetes, we have high blood pressure, all that points to eventual heart disease. The list 
continues. Since 1950, we have added 67% more fat content to our diet. This is a slide by Dr. Axe that just shows the sugar consumption from 1822 to 2005. So when you look at the increased rate of diabetes, it's clear one of the things that's contributing to that is what we're eating. This slide shows three illustrations representing three different diet habits. The bottom slide is a typical Western diet that's usually high fat, high protein, and a low quality carbohydrate. The photo in the middle is a moderate Western diet, still high in fat, and the illustration on the top is a diet that's low fat, moderate protein, and leans more on healthy carbohydrate choices. And you can see the difference in the atherosclerotic buildup if you're eating a high fat diet versus a diet that's very low in fat. I just want to share a little story to kind of go with this. Uh, my son, a couple years ago, bought, drove through a, a popular fast food restaurant. They had a $5 for five burgers deal, so he bought five. He ate two, his buddy in the truck ate two, and he threw the other on his dash, which was one of those steep dashes you couldn't really see the bottom of it unless you're right up on it, and forgot about it. Three months later, he pulled that burger off the dash and opened it up. It looked exactly like it looked the day he bought it. The bread didn't mold, the burger stayed the same, the smell was the same. And so you just have to look at that and wonder, is that really what I want to put in my body? Because that's really not food, it's just chemical wrapped in paper. This is a cath photo of what a narrowing artery with plaque buildup would look like to your cardiologist. And as you can clearly see, there's diminished blood flow here. Your blood cells carry nutrients and oxygen to your heart muscle. Just like you need nutrients in your body, how long can you go without eating? Your heart needs oxygen and nutrients as well. To kind of illustrate that, I would challenge you to get a straw, a drinking straw, put it in your mouth between your lips so that the rest of your mouth is closed and pinch your nose shut and breathe in and out through that straw only. And it won't take long before you realize what it feels like to be starved for air. And that's exactly what goes on with your heart when you're eating the wrong things, your lifestyle is wrong, and you start to have plaque buildup in your heart. So that heart muscle is asking for more oxygen that it can't get, and then you have pain, then you have a heart attack. Your heart is starved for oxygen and nutrients. We know that an unhealthy lifestyle contributes to atherosclerotic buildup. What we also now know is that that process is actually reversible with lifestyle alterations. So the photo on the left shows what a normal vessel should look like. The one on the right shows that plaque buildup beginning to happen. And if you look at the things in the middle that many of us battle every day, every single one of them is modifiable. You can fix this. So we're just gonna look at a few angiograms, which is just a picture of those vessels in your heart that your cardiologist would look at. This one is a left anterior descending artery. On the left, you can see how tight it is, not much room, it's kind of torturous. And then after 32 months of a plant-based diet, look at the difference in that vessel. Lifestyle change happening right in front of your eyes. Okay, here's another picture of a left coronary angiogram. You can see the slide on the left. There's a, a very narrow spot there in that yellow circle. And this is a 46-year-old gentleman from Houston. Six months before and after his plant-based diet, he did have medication added to it, but look at the difference in that vessel. So what does a plant-based diet look like? As you can see from this slide, most of your antioxidants come from plants. Your complex carbs and your vitamins mostly come from plants but you do get a high amount of fat from any animal product, as well as a large amount of protein. You can get all the protein that you need from a plant-based diet. Processed foods are varied, full of chemicals, and they're even worse than that. So we've kind of touched on why a high-fat processed diet is harmful. What are we gonna do with that information? Sentara Princess Anne launched an Ornish Lifestyle Medicine program in April of 2016, and we are currently the only site in the Commonwealth of Virginia to offer this option. In 2018, we're looking to open a second site outside Hampton Roads. As this proven plan of health and wellness continues, we foresee additional sites beginning to open up. So as we mentioned before, the American Heart Association predicts that by the year 2030, over 40% of the U.S. population will have some type of heart disease. At the current time, 80 million Americans have some kind of heart disease, and that's concerning. The Ornish Lifestyle Medicine Program is the first lifestyle change program proven to actually reverse coronary artery disease. It increases myocardial perfusion and reduces cardiac events, leading to the safe avoidance of another trip to the cath lab. 
So we're just gonna touch on a few of the studies in Dr. Ornish's toolbox. So for you statistic folks, this is a Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield study. They enrolled almost 4,000 patients in 24 sites across the country. And after one year, the results were pretty phenomenal. 96.5% of patients reported improvement in the severity of angina symptoms. So that's that chest pain and shortness of breath you get when you walk to the mailbox and you have to stop and rest. They also lost weight. And the surprising part was that depression scores actually were reduced by almost 50%. So this is a year later, and if you look at the green line on the top, that's the usual care. These patients went to the cath lab, maybe they got a stent, they were put on medication, but they continued to have coronary artery disease and blockages continued to progress. The blue line on the bottom is the intervention group. This is the group that followed a plant-based lifestyle that included changes that were healthy for them, and they actually had regression of coronary artery disease at the one-year mark. So in another study, Following patients for three years, 77% of them reported no angina symptoms at the three-year mark. And here at Princess Anne, we note that at about week three, we start seeing a real difference in their chest pain and in their shortness of breath. What we've learned from this is that bodies heal and they can do so very quickly. Your genes are not your fate and you do have the ability to take control of your health. So how do you do that? The Ornish Lifestyle Medicine program is 18 visits. You come for nine weeks, twice a week, four hours at a time. And we address four different modalities. So think of your health like you're sitting on a four-legged stool. One leg is diet, probably everybody would agree with that. One leg is exercise, everybody needs exercise. One leg is community, how much love and support you have in your life, how much connection you have. And then the fourth leg is stress management. Not that we can take you out of the stress that you're in, but we help you learn how to reframe that stress. Because just like your body needs rest, your mind needs rest as well. So if you're sitting on that four-legged stool and I knock one leg out of the stool, what happens? The whole stool falls over. So your typical day is gonna look like this. You're gonna come in and we're gonna put you on a cardiac monitor. You will exercise for the first hour with an exercise physiologist and a registered nurse who oversee that part of the program. And then you go to stress management class, which is another hour, that's your second hour. And that's some very gentle Hatha yoga, some meditation, learning how to do some deep breathing. That's not fit yoga, so you're not standing on your head and balancing on one leg. It's a very restorative process, a very relaxing process. And then the third hour, you come to the kitchen and we serve you an Ornish approved lunch, which is all vegetarian. It's not vegan, so you do have some non-fat dairy. You can have egg whites. And while you're eating your lunch, you get an education session. So it might be the exercise physiologist, it might be the dietitian is teaching a cooking class. Over those 18 sessions, we give you all the tools you need to successfully do this program. And then the fourth hour, you're with a trained counselor. You sit in a circle and it's not group therapy, it's group support. So she's teaching you how to connect, which is not something that we really do well anymore. We text, we email, we don't really talk to people. The love and support system you have makes a big difference in your health. So how do I get into this program? At the current time, most insurances are covering this program for the same qualifications that would get you into a normal cardiac rehab program. So you had a heart attack in the last year, you had a bypass surgery, you have current stable angina, you had a heart valve repair or replacement, or you went to the cath lab and they opened you up with a balloon or they put a stent in, or you had a heart or heart lung transplant. This is not separate from the physician that you see on a regular basis. We communicate with that person, we send them regular updates, and we're in constant dialogue so that they are still following you and they are still your caregiver. We do have an operational medical director that follows you very closely, and that's in conjunction with the doctor that you normally see. This is a bar graph that's not Ornish corporate, this is Centera Princess Anne, and this is taken from our first handful of cohorts. So we do labs in the beginning when you come in. We do labs at the nine week mark, and then we bring you back at the one year mark. These results that you're seeing now were achieved in nine weeks. So hemoglobin A1C dropped over 10%. LDL, that's your bad cholesterol, 21%. Exercise capacity increased by 32.8. Amazing results and just in nine weeks. So what does this diet look like? You can see the choices up there. They're things that you would normally eat, but they're low fat, 
And again, there is no meat, no chicken, no fish, no seafood, and no added oil. The reason there is no added oil is because Dr. Ornish found that in order to reverse a process, you really have to get low in the fat. So the Mediterranean diet, for instance, which is a very healthy diet, is about 30% fat. The reversal diet is 10% fat. So we don't use olive oil. Olive oil is a good oil, but it still has 14 grams of fat in one tablespoon. So you don't count calories on this, and yes, you can have a glass of wine. So you have a choice. Do you keep mopping the floor and treating the symptoms, or do you turn off the faucet by just fixing the problem? I thank you for your time and attention. If you feel you qualify for this phenomenal program or you want more information, please contact us at the number on your screen, 757-507-8820, or you can visit our website at ornish.centeraheart.com.